Hey guys, I'm going to show you footage of a Russian nuclear capable bomber being flown around on the Bering Sea just off Alaska. Let's check this out. I don't know if you can see that, but that is actually the Soviet star. Uh, obviously quite prevalent during the Soviet era. That's the plane itself. And that's capable of dropping nuclear weapons, uh, nukes on, I suppose, the West. So this is a military exercise that's being done by the Russians. Putin sends nuclear capable bear bombers over sea off Alaska and deploys nuclear armed ships in the Baltic for the you know, first time in 30 years. So um, this is another article that supports that. Um, Norway has, has uh, their intelligence has sussed out that Putin has sent either nuclear capable or nuclear armed ships and submarines in the Baltic Sea. Here's another one. If that's not enough, Scotland. Russia flies nuclear bombers over a sea north of Scotland. So the Russians are clearly signaling and uh, a, a credible threat of nuclear war. And at, by the end of this video, you will see that that's actually quite possible. And they're actually making it very explicit. Uh, if this continues on and they don't get a good place, uh, placing, I suppose, in the Ukraine war, uh, they, will, they will likely resort to nuclear weapons. Um, there's every indication that this is possible. I'll explain why. Um, I want to cover this also. So obviously we know about the Chinese balloon um, that's been flying around the US and the US have not been pleased. Uh, Anthony Blinken, uh, he, he was supposed to meet the Chinese, uh, his Chinese foreign minister counterpart and uh, he's, he's doing it now, but you know that meeting was postponed or canceled. But in the meeting in this uh, in Munich right now, in the Munich Security Conference, um, he has mentioned uh, or at least he's made almost accusations that China is providing material support uh, to Russia and assistance with systemic sanctions evasion. That means they're, they're, they're bypassing the sanctions that were uh, enforced by the US. And not only that, uh, Blinken is suggesting that the Chinese are considering providing lethal support, that is military support, just like the West has been doing to on the Ukraine side, they're suggesting that they're providing military support to the Russians, and that would have incredible consequences. China has fired back and says, you know, has urged China, uh, U.S. to change course, acknowledge and repair the damage uh, that its excessive for use of force taking down that balloon um, has caused to the China-U.S. relations. So. It's not too hard to read between the lines. I can, you can clearly quite tell that the relationship between the US and China is quite fractured. And um, you know this, this type of fracturing or this separation between the two, we're starting to see, uh, you know, looking at different nations signing up to both sides. Uh, let's look into, um, yeah, I mean, Right now, I'll, I'll skip those articles, but South Africa, for example, is uh, doing naval exercises over the weekend with Russia and China, and those ships are nuclear capable also, which is kind of strange, but South Africa is part of the BRICS nations, um, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, and which form like an alternate alliance to the Western alliances. Uh, I think Iran is joining that, but anyway... Um, more escalation with Philippines. Philippines in the last couple of days uh, have agreed to allow US a wider access to military bases. And this is code for allowing them to actually have bases in Philippines. Um, it's allowing access to military bases in Philippines, but really uh, what's the difference? If you have soldiers and military equipment there in the Philippines base, then that's a US base in the Philippines. Uh, so the Philippines are joining the fight and this is a significant development and it's going to put a lot of pressure uh, and make China feel the heat. I'll show you why. Let's, let's have a quick look in the, the, the map of where the Philippines is. So obviously, uh, US already has bases, a lot of bases 
uh, in South Korea. I've been there. Uh, I've seen the soldiers. <laughs> I've seen the soldiers in South Korea and Japan, as well as Australia. They have bases there. But the development of having a Philippines base brings it extraordinarily close to China, right? Um, this is uh, this will be a very strategic uh, maneuver and. China is going to feel a lot of pressure. It's going to be a little bit like, as this comes to fruition, as they start to deploy more troops there, China's going to sense this is more like a you know, Cuban missile crisis. And I wouldn't be surprised if they've really turned up the heat too and actually supported Russia uh, in, in the Russia-Ukraine crisis. So um, we're going to look into a few more developments and why I'm really concerned. This is really heating up. We thought, you know, from February in 2022 uh, till now that, you know, things are dying down. Sure, the commodity prices are cheaper and there's not as much of an emergency with, uh, well, prices, inflation and fertilizer prices. Natural gas is much lower. But let's look into this. Uh, where is that article? So Britain pledges to train Ukraine's pilots, signaling that war plans could come next. And... You know, when I look at this, I'm thinking, okay, I mean, how many planes does does Ukraine have, right? Why do you need to train pilots? You're going to train pilots and, you know, without giving an airplane to them? I mean, are they going to build an airplane themselves? They have the money for that? Obviously not. Uh, the US has allocated $70 billion in arms of whatever kind to them. They've already sent tanks. Um, uh, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, I mean... I suppose it's tiptoeing into this issue the way I can see it, right? Because when you think about, oh, we're not going to give you weapons because that would really annoy the Russians, but we'll train you, right? Well, what's the difference? Well, the difference is they haven't crossed that Rubicon yet, but Britain are considering crossing that Rubicon, going across that line, a uh, point of no return. And if that happens, Russia could consider escalating this war, de declaring war on uh, the Western forces, uh, and this could actually usher in uh, World War III. Um, now, if that was not bad enough, Russia is now amassing aircraft. We're getting intelligence that Russia is amassing aircraft uh, into within range of Russia, uh, Ukraine uh, as new offensive begins. So I think they're going to start this new offensive. It's going to escalate whether the Western forces are ready or not or want it or not. This is happening. It's going to escalate. And countries, maybe South Africa, uh, maybe, uh, yeah, uh, Philippines, um, UK, they're going to be drawn in to this conflict, potential conflict. It's not quite yet. Don't want to get, get too ahead of ourselves. But I want to, um, talk about the, what the Russians are thinking. So, obviously, they were sort of spurred uh, with uh, Ukraine uh, sounding like they want to join NATO, and they have their own reasons to invade the Ukraine, the Russians. But I will say one thing, is that the Ukraine itself is kind of like a flat plane, and you could have soldiers walking right through it and into Russia. But to the north and south, uh, of Ukraine, I want to take, put a, uh, get, get the map out. So, it is, it is, so to speak, do or die. Losing Ukraine is not an option for Russia. Because troops can walk all the way through Ukraine. This is kind of mountainous and that's the sea. But all through Ukraine and walk into Moscow. So they want this as a buffer zone. No one gets in, no one gets out, and they have security for Moscow. If they lose this war, it's very potential that Ukraine will probably usher in the counterattack against, and that's not that far from Moscow. They can't let that happen. The Russians cannot lose this war. The, the Russians, if they lose this war, it's, it's well, they're going to have to defend their turf, and they will use whatever means necessary. But not only that, we have to consider the guy in charge, Putin. Putin's power and his ability to stay in charge and perhaps stay alive is based on the success or uh, failure of this war. If he fails in this war, it's very possible he could lose his life. 
So this wall means everything. Now, when you what happens when you put someone and back them to a corner? Well, if they've got a big red button, that's a nuclear button, and they're willing to game, uh, if they use it, maybe the West won't, won't retaliate, then maybe he will use it. This is my theory. Let me know what you think. But, you know, I'm not the only one saying this. Uh, Medvedev, uh, who is, I think, the Prime Minister, but he used to be the former Russian president. He's the right-hand man of Putin. He warns of nuclear war if Russia is defeated in the Ukraine. So, you know, let's be honest. The Russians haven't been that good on the ground and in traditional warfare. Maybe they just haven't really fought a war since... I don't know, Afghanistan, <laughs> since the Cold War, um, but they just haven't been that effective, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, but yeah, um, they haven't made progress against the Ukrainians, and so we're really seeing that they're starting to look desperate, and they're actually saying it out, and you know, we are, uh, according to the nuclear clock, 15 seconds to midnight, uh, we're getting so, so close, guys, so, so close. Anyway, this is, I just wanted to update you. I'll let you know what's happening. If you're concerned about this, I'm getting actually quite concerned. Uh, you don't just send, um, you know, nuclear powered uh, ships and submarines and planes and start threatening this sort of stuff. And also, it's backed up by a serious conundrum by the Russians. They can't lose. They cannot lose at any cost. They've, you know, committed themselves too much. So, if they can't lose they could be using this to avoid the loss uh, in this war so anyway let me know what you think maybe i'm just fear mongering maybe i'm lo looking way too much into this let me know but uh i would appreciate you know if, if you like the video hit the like button and subscribe it really supports the channel i really want to get this going and uh, make something out of it i uh, really appreciate you guys anyway until next time thank you see you then Bye.